and this is Stitches TV and today I'm going to show you how to make the easiest skirt in the world inspired by Dolce and Gabbana. For this tutorial today what we need is we need a length of fabric that is the length from your waist to wherever you want it to be however long you want your skirt to be and then just add about oh, two inches for the hem and maybe two inches for the channel for the elastic and I'm using inch wide elastic today. For my skirt you also need some pretty braiding just to kind of oomph it up a little bit which we're going to choose in a minute for my special haberdashery drawer. Not a lot of people get to see this okay this is one of probably four haberdashery drawers that I have. I have a little bit of a thing about haberdashery. I buy them from all over the world. If ever I go on holiday, I seek out haberdashery. I already know what I'm going to use. Shall I show you? Because I was dreaming about it last night. I'm going to use this raffia braiding. Look at that. This raffia braiding is from a little haberdashery shop in Walthamstow Market called The Wool Shop. What do you think? What do you think about that? It is pretty gorgeous. Now, do you know what? Half the time, I am making things up as I go, because that's what designing is. No. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, do you know what? My mate Philippa is a sucker for a raw edge, and I cannot ignore that this has got a brilliant raw edge. So I'm not going to hem my skirt. I'm going to keep the raw edge. You have a look and tell me what you think. It looks pretty damn good to me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stitch just a little bit higher than the raw edge, just to make sure that it doesn't fray anything anymore. So I've measured from my waist to my knee how long I want the skirt. I like it to cover up just, just above my knee. I don't want it to go too far. And I'm placing it on here, and I've got this much more material, okay? Now do you know what? I'm going to fold it over like that because I've got more lovely raw edge up here at the top so I'll stitch along there as well to seal that off and I'm going to put a channel of elastic in like that so I get a kind of peplum effect so the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to stitch all along the edge of the fabric so I'm going to make sure that I have grey on the top thread and white on the bobbin because as you can see it's white behind and it's grey on top and I'm just going to be a little bit away from the frayed raw edge just to stop it from fraying anymore and I'm just stitching a little bit to the left of the fray so I'm going to do exactly the same to the top as well so that bit that's going to be down like a little peplum would you believe it that this is actually curtain fabric now all we have to do is just add our fancy braiding to the hemline. Decide how far away you want your braiding to be from the hem and lay it out as it's going to be. Now, if you want, you can use Bondaweb, cut it to two mil and glue it on each side first. Or do you know what? You can actually even use a Pritt stick. You can use a Pritt stick and it will temporarily glue things to fabric let it go off and then sew it. How fantastic is that? So I've got my needle on E on the Mini JL because it makes the needle go to the left. It makes it go nearer to the braiding because I can't quite get in there with this foot because it's got little beads there. So I stitched it, catching it all along the bottom and now I'm gonna do the same on the top. But do you know what's so fantastic about having a nice weighty braiding at the bottom? I'm not silly, you know. It's so that it pulls it down so you get really nice drapes and it's a little bit more flattering on my big hips. Now I always say the rule is your fabric should always be to the left but in this situation on the Mini JL because the needle will only go to the left we have to, to access the top we've got to have all our bulk in here. So I'm contradicting myself now. So I've stitched the braiding on top and bottom and I just have to go and press it because it really does give a more professional finish. So I'm pressing it on the wrong side because my braiding has got loads of tricky beads on the other side and I don't want to melt them. So I'm pressing it 
pressing from the wrong side. So do you remember I said I was going to fold over that little bit and then create a channel? Well to make my life easier I'm going to press it first. Now I've pressed that kind of peplum bit I'm going to stitch a long line that's going to be the channel for my elastic and it's going to go from one end to the other and it's going to be about two mils wider than the actual elastic so I'm probably going to stitch it about there. Now to help you you could draw it out first. When you do you know so what? long lengths of fabric it's so important to support your material on the table so it doesn't pull it out of shape and also start folding it in the way that you're going to be sewing it. So you see all, that's all folded like that. So if I keep it all nicely prepared then I just work my way through it. Now we're going to use a straight stitch and do you know what? We need to change the thread because I've got it on grey and I need it to be white on the top and the bottom. Esther, don't film the inside of my messy bag. <laughs> Usually to thread the elastic through I have this long thing that I've yet to know the name of. It's something like a bobkin where there's a hook and it grabs it and it closes it and we pull the elastic through but I can't find it anywhere. So I was just looking for a safety pin. So I've found that now. The bigger the safety pin, the better it is. Whilst we're looking in my bag, do you like my thimble? Isn't that lovely? Anyway, forget about that. Safety pin. We need a big safety pin, attach it onto the end of the elastic and start threading it through the channel. So, Lick your fingers, I know it's not very hygienic, and just start pulling it through. So I'm pushing the elastic and pulling the fabric and you just keep doing that. Now what we do is we ruche it up a little bit because we don't know how much to ruche it by. Ruche it up on the other side. So I'm trying to equally ruche it on both sides. And then I'm going to get it, when I've sort of ruched it quite a bit and I'm going to put it around me wherever it is that I think I'm going to be wearing it. Right, I've decided, and before it moves, I need to quickly get a safety pin to hold it in place on one side. Oh, get in there. And quickly get one on the other side as well. And then it's ready for me to just do a little stay stitch there and a stay stitch on the other side as well. So straight stitch, D, and it's just to hold that elastic in place so I don't have to worry about it pulling through. So I'm going to do the same on the other side as well and take my safety pin off. I've stay stitched each side. Now this is a little trick, no big deal, but Shaz was really impressed with it the other day to make sure that your gathers become equal. Stretch it, maximum stretch, let it stretch back and then they'll be equally gathered. Now. We need more stay stitches. You can put your stay stitches wherever you want. Now I'm going to put them roughly at the sides there. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because otherwise, unless you have elastic that's non-turning elastic, I think it's called that, if you've got regular elastic, you put stay stitches, it won't turn. Before I stitch up the one and only seam of this skirt, being slightly conscious of how possibly unflatting a ring it will be, I'm just going to press all my gathers to flatten them as much as possible. Right, I'm no spring chicken, okay? And I've got a little bit of a paunch on me. And gather skirts are not, as Esther pointed out a minute ago, <laughs> fantastic <laughs> for us people with paunches. Are they called paunches? Paunch. Paunches. <laughs> anyway, if I press these, they become a little bit more like pleats and hopefully a bit more flattering on my tummy. We're going to stitch up the one and only seam now. I'm going to put it right sides together, make sure everything's all lined up properly. So long as I stitch clear of my selfish, I'm just going to go straight all the way down, then zigzag the edges and we're finished. One final tip that applies to me but may not apply to you, I've got a beaded uh, bit of raffia braiding on my on my skirt, so I'm just going to cut off the beads where they fall in line with the seam. So I'm just chopping them off like that and making sure that they're not underneath. And then it's clear for me to sew. 
you wait till you see it. It's totally Dolce & Gabbana. I love it. Have a look. Wow. Wow. So we've got our raffia braiding with beads on. I folded over the excess fabric, which has created this peplum. I've pressed it down so it's not too sticky outy. And I've used curtain fabric. How brilliant is that? Thanks so much for watching Stitchless TV. Keep all your pictures coming and those comments. I love it when you comment. And share any things that you make on my Facebook page, Stitchless Tree. There are 70 more videos on Stitchless TV, so lots more to see. Thanks a lot, bye.